Welcome back to the Chainsaw Man Comparison Series! Now in Episode 6, which covers the rest of Chapter 15, Chapter 16, Chapter 17, and over half of Chapter 18, we stopped at a really crucial moment in Chapter 15, but after some redone cuts of things we've already seen with characters that have been moved around slightly, we'll continue our coverage of this chapter as Himeno tries conducting a little experiment of her own with the help of Kobeni. Right off the bat, it's clear to tell that this episode has some amazing camera work to show us, and while shots like these can be challenging, animator Pororo pulled it off very well. I imagine 3D guides are very handy for things like this because in a spatial sense getting the rotations proper for every single character as they reappear must be a difficult task to begin with. And Pororo didn't just do this cut, but every single cut up until the opening plays. Just the layout though, not the key animation. See, key animators may actualize the most important pose work, but layout artists basically plot out the skeleton of animation in relation to the background art, meaning that they literally lay out all the camera work and post-process effects for the composition team later on. True enough, most key animators are accustomed to doing their own layouts, but having someone who focuses wholeheartedly on the task is, in large part, where the major dynamic qualities of this show comes from. I mean, just look at the stellar camera work of Aki simply entering a room. Sure, Mappa could have adapted this part of him going through the bedrooms like a side-scroller adventure game, similar to how the manga did it, but instead it focuses heavily on inventive camera work that emphasizes the perplexity of the situation everybody's in. Clearly something is very wrong here, and the BGM that plays during this part accentuates that feeling well. It's a feeling so strong that it left Aki completely speechless this time when he opened the door behind Kobeni, instead holding off on this line until after Denji comes flying out of the hallway with a little more urgency this time. After that is when Aki finally gets his line straight, and this sequence is closed out with that awesome fisheye perspective from the manga. Well done to animator Pororo, he fit into this series quite well, and his energy is kept alive even after the opening plays where we see all the gang chilling in a nearby room. Nice touch how the anime showed that Aki was actively looking at the clocks before he runs down the situation with everyone, as this will be something he relays to them all a little later. Even now, we can see this show is still giving us S-tier cinematography, and it all subtly enforces the trapped reality of this situation. Some of them are taking it in stride, like Denji and Power, who continue to bicker with each other, but as we saw earlier, some other people reached their breaking point pretty early on. Now, Personally, I don't care how many people hate Kobeni, I think there's a lot to her character that we haven't scratched the surface of, but sure enough, on that surface level, she is a nervous wreck of emotion. And if it's one thing I learned from last episode, it's that Mappa really goes all out with it for scenes like this. Though her face does look a little different compared to the manga, but it's still enough for power to laugh at. Maybe not enough to roll around on the bed like she does in the anime alone, but certainly enough for Arai to get upset by this flagrant relishing in another's despair. But while all this hysteria is happening in the back of the room, Aki's been continuing to quietly observe and feels that now's a suitable time to tell everyone that they might be trapped in time as well. Something that really rocks everyone to their core. Except for the outwardly positive Denji, who understands the benefits of having time stand still for a bit. May as well leave tomorrow's problems to tomorrow's you, even if tomorrow never comes. But while Denji drifts off to sleep, this is where we'll finish out chapter 15 and move on to chapter 16, where the now open-eyed sleeper wakes up to Himeno, who's looking for someone to talk to. Because it appears that everyone's kinda got their own thing going on right now. If it's not looking for the devil, then it's huddling up in a bed to cry. Or come up with a good Nobel Prize winning idea. Were it so easy. So clearly, since neither she nor Denji have anything going Going on, they'll chill with Himeno for a while so that it'll be easier to guard the exposed Adai and Kobeni. That and give them a bit of a story time behind her love for cigarettes as well as how she got Aki caught up in her addiction. I think the moral of this story is that you should never give in to peer pressure if your health is on the line. But as far as Himeno is concerned, dying of cancer is much less likely than dying at the hands of a devil in their profession. Something that clearly happened to Himeno's last buddy and now she has to be the one to face the wrath of anyone that they loved. As you just saw, the anime immediately cuts to this slap, but the manga actually has a whole page worth of removed content, where it shows Himeno and Aki discover this woman on the street, where Himeno proceeds to tell Aki to keep his distance so she can get hit with no interference. Really, it's just narrative fluff, so it's fine if it got removed. Hell, I like the hard cut better, it's much more jarring and appropriate for what just happened. We don't really know the details of Himeno's previous buddy's death, but it's still pretty messed up for a grieving member to take out their sorrow on another grieving member. That's something that Aki won't stand for, so he retaliates 
mates in the most elementary way possible for some cheap satisfaction. The type that humored Himeno to no end and made her realize that Aki's not the 100% by the book character she made him out to be. He might just be interesting enough to last in this industry, as she basically tells him once we cut to them in the restaurant. Though it sounds more like an insult to the straightforward Aki, leading to some almond tofu thievery that the anime alone actually shows Himeno thwarting before she offers Aki yet another chance to ruin his lungs. One that Aki unfortunately took her up on, and lo and behold, we've got another addict on our hands. Though it seems his yearning for one in the current day isn't totally without reason, because even if Denji has an issue with Himeno letting Aki suck on her cigarette, he definitely needs something to take the edge off with what he's about to reveal. For it seems that the devil they took out a little earlier turned out to have some crazy growth hormones. He's gotten so big that he's outgrown the room that Aki likely found him in, and the anime alone even shows him bust down the door this time, leading to a more panic rush of everyone to run outside to see the goop monster in action. And boy does he have a lot to show. With how many different faces this thing has, drafting it into some sort of semblance of a character design must have been challenging, if they even did it at all. I have to wonder if episode director Shun Enokido just sort of freeballed this thing when constructing the storyboard for this episode, because while it references many faces from the manga, there's obviously a lot of extra footage of this thing that needs to be plotted out. Whether being used in quick cuts or as a background element, the movement of this thing consistently morphs, on top of which I love the approach they took for this thing's voice, or voices. It demanding that Denji be offered as a sacrifice in exchange for everyone's freedom is disturbing to listen to, and it seems to have had an impact on Kobeni here, who was readily willing to listen to it. Her appearance marks the end of chapter 16, so now let's move on to chapter 17, where she goes full psycho mode and rushes Denji with what looks like a kitchen knife. Not that she really poses much of a threat by herself, as she's quickly taken out by Denji's reliable senpais. She's proving to be quite the liability in this mission. Everything she does just further encourages the devil. Though to be fair, there aren't too many other options left that they can take anyways, outside of just attacking it normally. Well, whatever normal is for devil hunters. The unconventionalism associated with their attacks really spawns some slick cuts, like how Himeno summons her ghost here. And once again, it all comes down to how it was laid out. There were about four moving parts associated with this cut, and each one of them stuck to their own frame times. If one part wasn't moving, then another one was giving us the illusion that everything here is done on silky smooth ones. This approach is used quite frequently when creating time charts to keep the motion alive, and you can really notice it if you break down animation by layers. But what's most impressive is how all these layers coalesce and work with some of the coolest camera angles. Camera angles like these cuts right here, where the devil is telling us about how impossible it is to kill it. The way the lights go out briefly as we rotate around while moving backwards to reveal the veins that appear in sync with the sound of a heartbeat is paramount to the superb directorial talent of Enokido-san. He already envisioned some crazy angles for this episode, but it's clear that he's got plenty more to portray. And that's on top of the already difficult angles the manga portrays. Like this one right here, where the devil squirms behind Himeno while she explains that Denji's death would indeed lead to their freedom. Seems like more and more people are jumping on the kill Denji bandwagon by the minute, either out of fear or simply out of boredom. But leave it to the logical thinker to decide that killing him will likely create even bigger long-term issues. So the consensus is to leave the human-devil hybrid alone for now and go over their options a little more while watching the devil from a safe distance. Sure enough, there is another route they could take, but it's not one that Himeno is particularly fond of, so if they can't figure anything else out soon, it looks like Himeno will also jump ship and move over to the Kill Denji bandwagon like the rest of the squad. Which, as it turns out, they're right in the middle of a little squabble themselves once Adai discovers discovers that Power ate all of their rations. As you can see, she was a little less proactive in covering up her tracks this time, but these two would be suspicious over just about anything at this point, especially Kobeni, who's making accusations over things that couldn't possibly happen to begin with. She's bringing a whole new level of jerky, tongue-flailing hysteria into this room, and it's something that can be felt not just here, but all the way down the hallway as fresh fuel for the Eternity Devil. This upcoming sequence captures a tone that really summarizes the essence of this episode. Episode. One that perfectly mixes the fields of body horror and existential horror into one clean rendition. Petrified posing and unsteady camera work really encapsulates what the manga was going for. Everything is accentuated accordingly, from the way these three listen to the devil who has yet to reach them this time, to the slow-mo run of the other three trying to escape the pit of despair that ultimately the cameraman wasn't able to get away from because once he gets swallowed by one of the mouths, we get a first-hand look at what this devil is made of. This shot was so well executed.
executed, and it was a very inventive touch using light flares in the shape of mouths as both an aesthetic and distraction for gradually bringing the true form of the Eternity Devil to light. No pun intended. And as we can see, this design is one of incredible roughness. Its line work is so indistinct, perfect for representing an obscure concept like Eternity. Seems like running from this thing is just about the only thing they can do at this point, and even that's kind of hard when the entire world turns on its side. It's after that intense bout of vertigo and everyone looks down at their approaching demise that we'll end out chapter 17 and move right along into chapter 18 where the recruits are basically pleading to offer up Denji's life now. Despite the fearful display of infinite mouths, this still isn't an idea that Aki rocks with, so he opts to use his sword instead, but unfortunately, that's the final straw that immediately brings Himino over to team kill Denji. And while Aki is restrained, it gives the rest of Himino's partners in crime some time to take the long way around to jump Denji. An attack that he didn't really see coming like he did in the manga. Power aside, I don't think anyone here is especially pleased with how they're acting in this situation, but that's not stopping them from becoming murderers for the sake of leaving this place. We knew Aki didn't agree with that train of thought, but I don't think anyone here was expecting him to go out of his way for the guy, and especially not Denji himself. Just remembering how much of a rough start the relationship got off to, this is quite the development, even if it is done in his own self-interest. But really, that's just how everyone's acting in this situation, and that includes Himeno too because even if she was trying to protect someone else, it was at the cost of another. She was just afraid of losing someone that she cared deeply about. In truth, everyone on Himeno's team started acting out of their fear at some point, and it led them to do some things that they're not very proud of. Nonetheless, they're out of options. So it's on Denji to make the call. He'll agree to get eaten, but with the condition of not going down without a fight, among other more important things. For you see, Denji's been observing very carefully, and he thinks that he'll have a greater endurance for pain than the devil he's fighting. Plus, this is also his way of getting even with Aki for shielding him. Denji became debt-free a while ago, and he's not about to start that again, so he'll take care of it the same way he did last time, by throwing himself right into a sea of carnage. While we're not even done with Chapter 18, this last cut put a nice bow on this episode by encapsulating its most comprehensive strengths, mainly that of its layouts via expert storyboarding. Enokido-san created quite the banger of an episode, and in the process, created an atmospheric horror theme that we rarely see done right in anime. Mappa really knows how to pick them. In the coming episodes, we'll start gearing towards more action-oriented segments, and boy can't I wait to see who they'll choose then. For now though, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to give it a like and share it with a friend. And hey, also get subscribed for more Chainsaw Man comparison content. Once again, another special shout out to all my friends on Patreon, and as always, I hope you all have a fantastic day. This is Registry, signing off.